Hello everyone, welcome again. In this video, we will read class 8 chapter, The Open Window. We generally keep our windows open so that fresh air can come in. Is there any other reason of keeping the windows open? Well, as per Mrs. Seppleton's niece, there is. In this interesting chapter, we have three main characters. Mr. Frampton Nuttall, who has nerves problem. Mrs. Seppleton, who is supposed to cure him and her very calm and composed niece. The chapter is written by British writer H.H. H. Munro, who is better known by his pen name Saki. So let's see what is this whole mystery behind the open window. In the first part, we will see that Frampton Nuttall has bad nerves. Bad nerves means issues related to nerves, mental health condition. Some people get very excited, some people get extremely depressed. These are some of the mental issues. So Mr. Nuttall had one of the mental issue. He goes to a country for cure and calls on a family friend. Country here is refers to village. So for the cure of his bad nerves, he goes to a country and also visits a family friend for the cure. The lady who was supposed to cure Mr. Nuttall was busy upstairs. So Mr. Nuttall is attended by her niece who refers to a family mishap. That means a tragedy that has happened in the family focusing on the open window. My aunt will be down presently. Presently means soon, Mr. Nuttall said a very self-possessed young lady of 15. Self-possessed means calm, confident and composed. One who has control over her feelings. In the meantime, you must try and put up with me. Put up means stay. So since the lady who was supposed to cure Mr. Nuttall was busy upstairs, Mr. Nuttall was attended by her 15-year-old self-possessed niece. And she says that my aunt will be here soon. By the meantime, you should stay with me. Mr. Nuttall endeavored. Endeavored means tried to say something which would duly flatter. Flatter means impress or make the niece happy. The niece of the moment without unduly discounting. That means dismissing the aunt that was to come. So Mr. Nuttall tried to say something which would make the niece happy without dismissing or without discounting the aunt who was supposed to come. Privately, he doubted more than ever whether these formal visits of a succession of total strangers would do much towards helping the nerve cure which he was supposed to be undergoing. Succession means series of strangers, a number of strangers. But personally, Mr. Nuttall doubted whether visiting such total strangers, a number of total strangers, would actually do anything good to his nerve problem. I know how it will be, his sister had said when he was preparing to migrate to the rural retreat. Migrate means move. Retreat means escape. So when Mr. Nuttall was thinking of going to rural area to cure his nerve, his sister has told that I know how is it going to be. You will bury yourself down there and not speak to a living soul and your nerves will be worse than ever from mopping. From mopping means from be being unhappy. She said that you will go there and you will not speak to anybody there and your nerves will be very worse. Rather than being good, they will be worse because of being unhappy. I shall just give you a letter of introduction to all the people I know there. Some of them, as far as I can remember, were quite nice. So the sister said that I will give you letter of introduction, an introductory letter to the people that I know. Some of them were good as far as I know. So Mr. Nuttall's sister knew that Mr. Nuttall is not going to speak to anybody there and he, his condition would be worsened because of being unhappy. So she gave a letter of introduction to him for the people whom she knew and who were good. Frampton wondered whether Mrs. Seppleton, the lady to whom he was presenting one of the letters of introduction, came into the nice division. Frampton thought whether Mrs. Seppleton, the lady to whom he has to give one of the letters of introduction of his sister, counts into nice people or not. Do you know many people, many of the people round here? Asked the niece. When she judged that they had had sufficient silent communion. Communion means mental connection. So the niece, when she was sure that they had sufficient mental connection, she asked Mr. Nuttall whether he knows many people around that place or not. And Mr. Nuttall replied hardly a soul. He said that he doesn't know anybody. 
His sister had stayed there four years ago and she had given him letter of introduction for some of the people here. And he made the last statement in a tone of distinct regret. That means feeling sorry as if he was sorry not to know many people here or having to come here. Then you know practically nothing about my aunt pursued the self-possessed young lady. Pursued means continued. The con she continued that since you don't know many people here, then you practically know nothing about my aunt. Only her name and address admitted the caller. And Mr. Nuttall accepted that he knows only Mrs. Sappleton's name and address. He was also wondering whether Mrs. Sappleton was married or widowed because he knew nothing about Mrs. Sappleton. An undefinable something about the room seemed to suggest masculine habitation. There was something about the room that pointed towards masculine habitation. That means the room was occupied by a man or the room belonged to a man. Her great tragedy happened just three years ago, said the child. That would be since your sister's time. So the niece said that her great tragedy, that means tragedy of her aunt, Mrs. Sappleton, happened just three years ago when your sister was not here, just when your sister had gone. And Mr. Frampton, he was surprised. He asked her tragedy. Somehow in this restful country, spot tragedy seemed out of place. So he thought that this is such a peaceful and calmful country and being and tragedy happening here was something out of place, which was unbelievable. You may wonder why we keep that window wide open on an October afternoon, said the niece, indicating a large French window that opened onto a lawn. So in the room, there was a window open and the niece pointing towards the window said that you must be wondering why do we keep that window open in the October afternoon? It is quite warm for the time of the year, said Frampton. But has that window got anything to do with the tragedy? So Mr. Frampton, he just gave a reply that it is warm at this time of the year. Then he asked, has the window to do anything with the tragedy that has happened in the family? Then the niece replied that out through that window three years ago, the same day, her aunt's husband and her two young brothers, they went away for their day shooting and they never came back. In crossing the moor to their favorite shooting ground, moor is an open and uncultivated grassland which is typically preserved for shooting. They were all engulfed, that means buried, in a treacherous, treacherous is dangerous though it seems safe, piece of bog. Bog is a wet and spongy ground that is very soft to support a human body and it may sink into it. She said that three years ago on the same day while crossing their favorite shooting site, they were all buried in a dangerous piece of bog. They all sank. It had been that dreadful wet summer, you know, and places that were safe in other years gave way suddenly without warning. Dreadful means terrible. She said that it was a terribly wet summer and places which were otherwise safe, they all of a sudden became dangerous without giving warning. Their bodies were never recovered. That was the dreadful part of it. Here the child's voice lost its self puzzles note and became falteringly human. Falteringly means hesitating and shaking. So she also said that the most dreadful, the most terrible part of it was that the bodies of those three men, they were not recovered. And now the child who was generally confident, she became hesitant. Then the niece continued saying that poor aunt always thinks that someday those men will come back. They and the little brown spaniel, the dog which was lost with them. And they will all walk in through the window just as they used to do. That is why the aunt keeps the window open every evening till it is quite dark, till it is dusk. And poor aunt, she has often told the niece how they went out. Her husband carrying a white waterproof coat over his arm. And Ronnie, her youngest brother, singing Bertie, why do you bound to tease the sister, Mrs. Seppleton, as she has often told that the song gets into her nerves. So the brother used to sing that song to tease the sister. And then the niece continued saying that, do you know something or something on still quiet evenings like this? I almost get a creepy feeling that they will all walk in through that window. She says that on quiet evenings like this, I always feel that they will all actually come through that window. Now, in the second part, we will see 
that Mrs. Sappleton comes down at last and inadvertently, inadvertently means unknowingly, confirms the story told by the niece. Mr. Frampton tries to acquaint, acquaint means make aware or explain. Mrs. Sappleton, his host, the nature of his ailment, the nature of his problem, the disease. And through the open window, he sees things that actually worsens his nerves. She broke off with a little shudder. Shudder here means tremble. So the niece who was telling this story, she trembled a little. It was a relief to Frampton when the aunt bustled into the room. Bustled means enter noisily, making a noise with a whirl of apologies. That means making apologies in quite succession. So the aunt came inside the room and it was a relief to Mr. Nuttall who was still now listening to the creepy story of the niece. And she came with a lot of apologies saying uh, sorry for being late. Late in making her appearance. I hope Vera has been amusing you. She said, she has been very interesting, said Mr. Frampton. So she asked that I hope that Vera, Vera is the name of the niece. She has been entertaining you. And Mr. Frampton accepted by saying that she is quite interesting. And then Mrs. Sappleton said that I hope you don't mind the window open. She said it briskly. That means in a very energetic way. Then she continued that my husband and my brother will be home directly from shooting and they always come in this way. They have been out for a snipe in the marshes. Snipe means to hunt a water bird. So they'll make a fine mess over my poor carpet. So like you men folk, isn't it? So this is how unknowingly she confirmed the story by saying that my husband and brothers, they have gone out for shooting after a snipe and they will come out. That is why the window is open because they will make a mess. That means they will spoil my carpet. Men folk, how the men are, you know. She rattled on cheerfully. Rattled on means went on. Happily, she kept telling about the shooting and scarcity of birds. Scarcity means shortage of birds and the prospect of for duck in the winter. So she kept on telling about the shooting things. To Frampton, it was all purely horrible. So Mr. Frampton, who has already been told a creepy story by the niece, he was terrified. It was horrible for him. And he made a desperate but only partially successful effort to turn the talk to a less ghastly topic. That means less horrible topic. He was conscious that his hostess was giving him only a fragment of her attention and her eyes were constantly straying past him to the open window and the lawn beyond. Straying means moving. So Mr. Nuttall, he was trying to make an attempt to talk about topic which were less horrible and he was also aware that his hostess, that means Mrs. Seppleton, she was not giving him the complete attention. Her eyes were moving, constantly moving towards the window which was behind him. He was certainly an unfortunate, it was certainly an unfortunate coincidence that he should have paid his visit on the tragic anniversary. So Mr. Nuttall thought that it was certainly a coincidence and unfortunate one that he had visited on the same day when it was anniversary of the tragic incident. The doctors agree in ordering me complete rest and absence of mental excitement and avoidance of anything in nature of violent and physical exercise, announced Mr. Frampton. Mr. Frampton wanted to tell Mrs. Mrs. Seppleton about his suffering, so he told that Doctors has ordered me complete rest and they have told me to stay away from mental excitement or any violent physical exercise. Mr. Frampton, who labored under the tolerable widespread delusion, delusion means false impression, that total strangers and chance acquaintances are hungry for the least detail of one's ailment and infirmities, that means suffering, the sickness, their cause and cure. On the matter of diet, they are not so much in agreement, he continued. So Mr. Frampton was under this false impression that people who are totally strangers to you or who are chance acquaintance, that means whom you hardly know, they want to know all the details of your pain and suffering. But he continued telling also about his diet. Mrs. Seppleton was least interested in what Mr. Nuttall was saying. She just uninterestingly noted to what he was saying and uh, she agreed with uh, in order to agree with him she just said no in a voice that was that was replaced by yawning at the end towards the end he was she was yawning because she was not interested but suddenly she was her voice was brightened and she was alerted 
but not because of what Mr. Frampton was saying. Here they are at last, she cried, just in time for tea. And don't they look as if they were muddy up to the eyes? So she had seen something and then she said that here they are at last. They are here and they are just in time for tea. And she also said that don't they look muddy? They as if they are all muddy. Now Frampton shivered slightly. He was frightened. He slightly shivered and he turned towards the knees who was also looking uh, niece with a look intent to convey sympathetic compre uh, comprehension. Sympathetic comprehension means an understanding showing sympathy. So Mr. Frampton was terrified and he looked towards the niece in order to get sympathy. The child was also staring through the open window with a dazed horror in her eyes. There was horror in the eyes of the child also. In a chill shock of nameless fear, Frampton swung around in his seat and looked into the same direction. So Mr. Frampton, he was terrified, he was very scared and he also looked around. He swung from his seat, that means he turned from his seat and looked towards the window. In the deepening twilight, three figures were walking across the lawn towards the window. So in the darkness, three figures, they were coming towards the window and they were all carrying guns under their arms and one of them was additionally, additionally burdened with a white coat hung over his shoulder and one was carrying a coat which was hanging over his shoulder. And there was also a tired dog, a spaniel, which was close to their heels. They entered the house without noise and then in a hoarse song, one of them sang, I say Bertie, why do you bound? So just as the niece has told. Now let's see what happened in the third part. What else can Frampton do but a hasty retreat? That means to leave quickly. Has he seen a ghost? The niece does have a knack of explaining an uncanny coincidence. Uncanny means unnatural, unexpected, strange. So the niece has a way of explaining unnatural incidents. So as soon as Mr. Frampton saw three figures walking inside the room, he grabbed his coat widely, his head, his stick, and then he swam towards the door, the gravel drive, that means the, the, woody, the muddy path around and the front gate were dimly noted stage in his headlong retreat. So he just swam, he just went out of the house. A cyclist coming along the road had to run into the hedge to avoid imminent collision. Imminent, imminent means a crash that was about to happen. So a cyclist, cyclist, a person who was cycling and who was coming towards the road, he has to just turn towards the hedge, the boundary, to avoid any kind of crash or collision. Here we are, my dear, said the bearer of white Macintosh. Macintosh is a long coat. So the uh, person with the coat, he said that here we are, we are coming through the window. And who was that who bolted out as we came? A bolted out means rushed out in a hurry. So who was that who rushed out in a hurry as we came in? And Mrs. Seppleton said that he was the most extraordinary man I have ever seen. He would only talk about his illness and he dashed off. That means moved out certain as soon as you came without even saying a goodbye or with an, without apologizing. One would think he had seen a go. So he moved out in such a way, in such a scared way, in such a hurry that one would see, think that he has seen a ghost. I expect it was the spaniel, said the niece calmly. But the niece calmly said that I think he went out because of the dog, the spaniel. He told me he had a horror of dogs because he has told me that he is scared of dogs. He was once hunted. He was once hunted into a cemetery. Cemetery means a graveyard somewhere on the banks of Ganges by a pack of dogs. So she said that he was once hunted into a graveyard by a pack of dogs near the banks of river Ganges and he had to spend whole night into that grave which was newly dug. He, he, had, he fell into that grave and he had to spend his whole night there with all the dogs, with the creatures snarling and grinning and foaming just above him with all the creatures who were just barking and they were grinning and they were making noises just above him. Enough to make anyone lose their nerve. That means enough to, which is enough to make anyone getting scared. So he is extremely scared of dog. That is why he moved out in such a hurry without even saying goodbye. Romance at short notice were her speciality. 
finding occasion of fun and enjoyment whenever possible was the speciality of the niece. So it is the niece in the whole story who is whole culprit who has scared Mr. Frampton and at last she came out with a very interesting story of his storming out of the house. So now do you understood? Did you understand the importance of the open window, the significance of the open window in the story? The story is by H.H. Munro. Wasn't it interesting? So here are the question answers students. You can pause the video, go through the question answers, try to do them yourself and then cross check. Pause at each slide so that you can cross check your question answers. So this was the interesting story. I will take your leave here. I will see you in my next video. Till then, bye bye. Take care of yourself.